Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, for the London 2024 information session. My name is Kelly, and I am the study abroad coordinator. Joining us today, we have Professor Lindsay Ayu, and we have um, AIFS, our program provider's representative, Ms. Paula Messina, and we have our um, program director, Alice Yan, and then we have a special guest, Alexa. She's our study abroad um, ambassador. She went to study abroad in London in fall 2022. She will share with you uh, about her study abroad experience. Um, first, um, we will have um, Alice to welcome everybody. Then we will have um, Professor and uh, Paula to uh, do the program presentation. Um, the next, I'll talk about scholarship opportunities. Um, Alexa will share her experience. Finally, we will have a chance for you to ask, ask questions. We'll be able to answer your questions. Um, Alice, the stage is yours. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to this uh, London Program Information Session. Uh, I want to know where you are from. Skyline College? Uh, CSM or Kanyada. So first one, let me know whether you are from Skyline College. Please raise your hand if you can. Hey, we have a few from Skyline College. Okay, how about uh, Kanyada College? Great, we see some hands. And then the last one is CSM, College of uh, St. Mateo. Great. Yeah, more hands. So more students from CSM. Thank you so much. Thank you for your participation. I'm so glad to see you here today and then see that you plan to study abroad and you're interested in learning more about this program. Uh, again, my name is Alice Young. I'm the Acting Director of Special International Programs. So we offer study abroad services to all the three colleges. In addition to this London program, we offer two other master programs in Barcelona and uh, Florence. So right now we have uh, 27 students from SMCCD who are studying in Florence. Uh, we offer SMAS programs. And then this summer, we also offer four uh, summer programs in Barcelona, and also in Asia and Africa. Nine global internships in nine countries. In addition to that, we also offer a community travel program in Japan and transfer abroad services. So we are partner in France. So these are all uh, like important information for you to be aware that the resources and the services that we offer here. Uh, so um, I, I we believe that study abroad is uh, Empowerment is an empowerment experience, and you will gain a lot personally, academically, and professionally. And uh, we expect that you will gain competence and skills that will be helpful for your future career development. And according to research, employers tend to hire students who have international uh, experience. I'm so glad that uh, the AIFS uh, representative, Paula Messina, uh, regional director, is here with us. And then Professor Lindsay Ayat, uh, the leading professor, is here with us to share more information about this program with you. And Paula uh, has worked with AIFS since 1991, long time. And uh, AFS is the program provider of our master programs. So we have long-term relationship with this organization. They offer excellent services to our students. And Professor Ayat is the professor in communication studies. And uh, in addition to leading this program, she's also leading a lot of other things on campus and also in the district. And currently she serves as the uh, District Academic Senate President as well. So thank you for your leadership. Uh, now I would like to invite Paula and uh, Lindsay to share more about the program information with you. And okay. feel free to uh, leave questions in the chat box while we give the presentation about the program. 
Thank you. Thanks again for your participation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the introduction, Alice. And hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I know sometimes when we host these info sessions, it might not work with everyone's schedule, um, but we're so happy to have you here and learn information. So the plan is we'll go through the presentation. Um, if you have a question and you're like me and you're like, oh gosh, if I don't write this down, I'm going to forget it, put it in the chat. And if somebody can answer it during the presentation, um, that's great. Otherwise, we'll definitely have time at the end to make sure that we answer all the questions that you might have. So study abroad in London. Before I go into all the details about the program, the classes, experience, just a bit of background around AIFS. So it was founded in 1964 and over 1.6 million students in over 20 countries um, had, have participated thus far, which is pretty impressive. And back in 1988, 1988 <laughs> AIFS, AIFS, there's so many acronyms, partnered with NCSAC, which stands for Northern California Study Abroad Consortium. There it is. I got it. It might, it might be on a quiz, y'all. So just prepare yourselves for that. Um, they work with local program coordinators in our study center, center here in SMCCD and the other colleges that will be joining us on this trip. And we'll go into more details about who that's going to be. And there is extensive incident responses and crisis management procedures that they follow. So while it can be a little bit nerve wracking to think about, oh, I'm going to be moving away. Maybe for some of you, this is your first time ever going on an airplane or studying outside of a country or being outside of the state of California for that matter. And so there's a team there, including myself, that will make sure that you have the support that you need as we go on this exciting adventure. The Northern California Study Abroad Consortium consists of four community college districts, Contra Costa Community College, which is made up of Contra Costa, Diablo Valley, and Los Medanos College, the Los Rios Community College District, which is uh, considered covering American River, Co um, Cosimus River College, I might be mispronouncing that, I apologize, and Folsom Lake College, as well as Sacramento City. And then we have San Mateo Community College District, which is what you all belong to, and we've already heard who is going to, who's enrolled at Kenyatta College of San Mateo, Skyline College, and then lastly, we have Santa Rosa Junior College. And so why do I bring this up? It's because these are the different students that you will be engaging with in your classes. So here at San Mateo Community College District, you might have friends that are getting their degree at Kenyatta, Skyline, or CSM, but you're going to allow yourself the opportunity to network and communicate with people outside of our tiny district um, in this London study abroad experience. And that is one of the really cool opportunities we think about exposure to other people and cultures. Um, so why study abroad? Fewer than 10% of U.S. college students study abroad. I myself was a community college student, and then I transferred to a four-year, and I was never afforded the opportunity to study abroad, which is kind of why I was excited to jump at this opportunity. I grew up thinking that I was Norwegian and French Canadian, and I, I took a DNA test, and it came back 78% British and the rest Irish and Scottish. So my whole childhood was a lie, basically. No, I'm kidding. No, but it was. Um, but I'm excited to participate in the London Study Abroad, not only to understand more about my British heritage, but also to have that experience, right? And so part of that experience for you as students is showing college admissions and, and employers um, that you have engaged in this cross-cultural exchange and intercultural competency and problem solving that, you know, not everybody has, has or will experience. Um, thinking about personal skills, independence, creativity, um, adaptability, learning to be flexible and going with the flow is really important, as well as communicating with others and navigating different cultures, right? And then lastly, 85% of students agree that study abroad was the most meaningful experience in their undergraduate education. And my sister did study abroad, and she stands by that statement. So really excited for you all to be here. And if you're thinking like, oh, this sounds great. I don't know about being able to afford it. We will get to the scholarship opportunities and the, the cost breakdown um, a little further on. So why London? Why is London such a cool place to study abroad? And it is in a perfect place situated for travel around the UK and Europe. 
There are several budget airlines around Europe. There's planes, trains, automobiles. Um, but these are former AIFS students who have participated in study abroad programs and showcasing the different trips that they went on when they had a weekend or there was a special trip that was scheduled based on their study abroads. And we'll talk about more what that can mean when we get to that point of travel. So program dates. The program dates for the study abroad are a bit different than our regular semester that we're used to. And so it's kind of a, a shorter condensed format, but you all will depart the US September 5th versus starting a semester mid-August, right? And then you'll arrive in London on the 6th. We have our orientation together as the consortium. So it could be anywhere between um, 120 to 150 students from all four districts. And then on the 8th, we have a work different workshops and city tour that's led by our wonderful AIFS partners to help us kind of get our bearings and surroundings. And then September 9th, classes begin. And so we'll go through our classes for a little over a month, and then you get what is called a mid-semester break, which is really exciting, something um, that we don't necessarily get in the fall semester. We get a whole week. We usually get a few days for fall recess. So that's an opportunity there where you um, could plan trips and travel uh, within your budgetary means. Our last day of class is December 5th, so we're ending that semester a little bit earlier than our traditional semester. And then we the end of program is the 6th, and that's when we will, we will head home on December 6th. So to kind of give you a lay of the land in regards to the program dates and how this semester will kind of function in that way. So academics, um, in regards to the classes that are being offered, all courses are UC and CSU transferable. They all meet the general education requirements, which I think is important, especially for those of you that are looking to take this experience and apply it to a potential transfer opportunity. All students will enroll in a British life and culture course. And so um, I'll get into a little bit more detail about that. But in addition to that, you will also be taking a total of 12 units. And what's really cool about the British Life and Culture course, as well as the way that other teachers in the program are situating their curriculum and their pedagogy, is that we're really able to bring London into the classroom space in regards to what we're talking about, drawing the, the comparisons, the analysis, and then the many field trips that we'll participate in, which is just another reason why this experience is so cool. Here are your professors. Um, pictured from left to right, we have Ann Belden, who teaches media and journalism. This is me. Um, I'm clearly the tallest one in the group. Um, I'll be teaching your communication studies courses. We have Gregory uh, Bayer that will be teaching history. And then we have LD Green that will be teaching our English um, courses. So the courses offered by Anne, looking at journalism and media are as follows. So you have the opportunity to choose from the list of courses. Um, in addition to, you will be taking the British Life, but there are 12 courses that you can choose from to get your 12 units. And they're all, I believe, three unit courses. So journalism two is news gathering and news writing. Journalism 52A, news media practice. Media four, intro to mass communication. And then this, the students at Santa Rosa will be enrolling in this course. So this doesn't pertain to you. We'll get to the one that matters for San Mateo. Uh, Gregory is our history professor on this trip, and he'll be teaching history of Europe since 1500, history of the United States to 1877, and history of the United States 1865 to present. LD Green, oh, this is me. This is me, Lindsay Ayotte. Um, I will be teaching COM 127, Argumentation and Debate. So that's a, a course that's going to be geared more towards a political lens and looking at the the political realm in regards to the UK. Um, COM 150 Intercultural Communication, we're really going to be looking at here we are in London and what are the intercultural aspects and cross-cultural exchange experiences that we're participating in. And then lastly, gender communication, which is going to look at the different gender dynamics, um, comparing American culture to British culture, as well as looking at it from uh, a world lens in regards to gender, masculinity, femininity, gender dynamics, all of those aspects, really, really fun. 
And so the Global Studies 650 course is what you will be enrolled in for British life and culture. So maybe I you decide that you don't want to take any of the comm classes. I will still be your instructor for the British life and culture course. And in that British life and culture course, um, it's a larger lecture space. And I keep saying we'll get to that because there's a lot of information in this presentation. LD Green is the English instructor for um, our study abroad, and LD will be teaching children's lit, literature of the fantastic myth, fantasy, and science fiction, thinking and writing critically about literature, and then, um, again, the British Life and Culture course. So this British Life and Culture course. This is an opportunity for us to come together as our consortium, so a large group of people, and in conjunction with folks in AIFS and guest lectures, we're going to be learning about society in London and the UK. And so that's where the weekly course of British Life and Culture comes in. This is where our field trips will take place. And so the way that it will work is we're going to be going to museums, perhaps, um, gastro gastronomy, checking out the food scene, understanding customs and traditions. And as a reminder, you must enroll in British life and culture as a part of this whole process. And this is the same class for all schools, but I will be your instructor of record. And the four of us, your instructors, have talked about working together to create these kind of assignments for the course and how we want to grade them moving forward. So that'd be hopefully be a standard thing across the board. So where are we actually going to be doing the studying? So we've talked about the courses, we've talked about the instructors, but we will be, our, our campus will be the AIFS Student Center, which is located in Kensington, which is a neighborhood, and I'll show you that on a map. Um, there will, at the Student Center, there's student lounge, there's computers, printer access, there's student services staff available during office hours and 24 seven emergency contacts. There, um, that is where staff will coordinate um, orientation. That's where our classrooms will be. Perhaps that's also where you can get help with different housing issues that might arise. And then also booking your culture activities and excursions. So there's a lot of resources that will that are here at the student center, and it's all geared towards helping and supporting people in our program and um, other people that might be there studying with AIFS. So here on the map, this AIFS icon right here is where we are situated to kind of give you an idea of Kensington. And this neighborhood is really nice. I believe posh is the word that was used to describe it um, when we went through our faculty orientation. And so um, most likely none of us will probably live in this area, but housing will be a short 30 to 45 minutes away on the tube, which is kind of our underground muni situation, but a lot more, I think, productive in regards to scheduling and timing. So in addition to being at the AIFS Student Center um, with your student fees and being registered in the program, you get um, access to Imperial College Student Union. So we're not going to be taking classes there, but you will have a membership and it's a short walk. There's a lot of clubs that you can join. So if you want to branch out from our kind of consortium folks and meet some local people or other students studying abroad. There's opportunities for you to engage in things like that. There's also rec sport activities and then a gym um, and a pool. The pool does have additional fees, but it is a great opportunity for you to kind of feel like you're in that um, more traditional university kind of experience. So it's a great resource and we're really excited for you all to be able to use that. So where are we gonna live, right? That is, I think, one of the, the biggest anxiety inducing thing is trying to figure out, well, where am I gonna stay? What is that gonna be like? And so you actually have two options as students enrolled in this program. The first option is the homestays. And with the homestays, this is included in the program fee. So there's twin twin rooms, meaning like there's two twin beds in a, in a local homestay. You'll most likely have a roommate. And when you have a homestay family, they will be providing you the continental breakfast. Um, they're, <clears throat> they might allow, like help you with your laundry, although that's not expected. But I do know that when students studied abroad in Costa Rica and did homestays, their home families would actually do their laundry for them and clean. But let's not get too comfortable and assume that that's going to happen. Um, and there's also going to be Wi-Fi at the homestays. 
students have said in the past that homestays are a really cool opportunity to just have that other layer of like, this isn't necessarily just a va vacation, right? We're not just transplanting ourselves, but being more engrossed in the culture itself. But if that's something that might sound intimidating and you're just like, I don't know if I want to participate in that, you have the opportunity for an additional fee to participate in a student residence option. And that's going to be what we might consider more of like a dorm-like situation. And that's where um, there'll be bedrooms with two twin beds. So you'll have a roommate. Again, a similar commute, 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. There is kitchenettes, bathrooms, study area, laundry facilities. There's Wi-Fi, but no meals are included. So when you do the homestay, you're guaranteed breakfast from uh, your host family. But again, the student residence is an additional $17.55. Getting around, so transportation pass. We we love a good Uber uh, Lyft moment, but that can start to be a bit expensive. And so what's really great about this program is that you're going to be given what's called an Oyster card. An equivalent would be kind of like our Muni card if you take BART or um, you take Muni in San Francisco. But you'll be able to use this and um, be able to go underground and use buses zone one, three, or four. Um, for homestay students, zones one and two, um, or I'm sorry, one, three, and four for homestay students, zones one and two for resident students for the duration of the program. And so more information about the Oyster card, how to navigate the underground, they're going to go all over that in orientation once we arrive and get there. And after about a week, I think you all will be experts at navigating it. And so in addition to the curriculum, the life, uh, the British Life and Culture course, there's also going to be opportunities for you to participate in weekly calendar of subsidized cultural activities. So that would mean getting together with folks in the program. Um, there'll be sign up sheets. There'll be announcements that go out. Like, do you want to go watch a football game? Do you want to take a walking tour, go to a theater performance, different day trips and things? So depending on your schedule and what's available, there's opportunities for you to participate um, in that kind of cultural exchange, but not having to do it alone, right, which is kind of exciting. So here we get to the cost breakdown, and included in the program fee of $9,495 is housing in the homestay, which includes the breakfast that I had previously mentioned, your transportation pass, membership to the college, Imperial College Student Union, access to the support center, um, orientation program and workshops and the guided tour of London leading up to, and then that first week of arrival, weekly subsidized activities in London, medical insurance, which is really important, um, and then pre-departure services and orientation. So that means getting to and from the airport, right, when you, when you, when we're leaving and then when we're coming back to the States. So for 9495 that is what is included. The expense is not included, okay? And so this is very important to be aware of. Airfare, there will be an optional flight avail available uh, for students that should be, uh, oh, optional flight available or students may pay may purchase your flight separately. Any community college tuition fees. Um, so we know that free college isn't free college for all, but there might be additional fees that are tied to the program expenses, and you would need to work with um, our study abroad office and um, to figure out those aspects. If any of the courses that you enroll in require textbooks, um, I personally use open educational resources, so there'll be no textbook fees for my courses, but I can't confidently speak about what other instructors will be using. That's something to consider. And then personal expenses, right? Having to go, if you don't have a passport, having to apply for your passport fees and then any personal travel that you wanna do on weekends or when we have break from, from classes, that is also something that you would need to be responsible to pay for. And then meals, right? Except as specified. So on different trips, there might be meals included, the homestay, breakfast, but anything else that you want to eat or drink throughout your time there is an expense that you will have to think about. And then lastly, if you're interested in getting the worldwide trip protector insurance, which is something that um, is highly recommended, but not, not 
a like a mandatory thing to participate, but this allows you to protect yourself in case there is a cancellation or an interruption. And that is something that AIFS will offer with enrollment. So you just you just never know what can happen. Um, and so it's always good to kind of think about planning ahead at worst case scenario, but we're gonna put positive thoughts out there and everything is gonna go swimmingly. Um, in regards to the optional group flight, so this flight is round trip from SFO to, I believe, Heathrow and then back to SFO. There's airport pickup by AIFS staff and transfer to your accommodations in London. And then the same thing for a return transfer at the end of the program. So taking you from London where you're living to the airport before we fly back to the States. The, the cost right now for the optional group flight is 1,296. And that price breakdown is 625 for airfare, which is a pretty decent price with um, the 671 government and airline imposed taxes, fees, and fuel subcharge, surcharges. So this is subject to change until ticketed, um, but this is a really good deal on a round trip ticket. When I spoke about optional additional things that you can participate in, yes, you can do your own adventures, but also there's an optional Scotland tour that's being offered during this program. Um, I do believe that seats are limited on this. So if there's something that you're like, yes, I definitely want to participate. Um, we When the sign up happens, I definitely encourage you to get on that. But it's four days and three nights. You will be transported, transport, you will, <laughs> grammatically what am I trying to say you will get on a train <laughs> and the train will take you to accommodations uh, in student hosp hostels there'll be breakfast and evening meals and then a guided tour of the Scottish Highlands and Islands of Scotland and that's for an additional charge of 695 so that might be something that you find interesting and want to participate in the options available to you and then here we have different scholarships. This list will be uh, provided to you. Um, and I don't know, Kelly, if you wanted to jump in here and to talk about it, or we wanted to wait until the end. Um, we can talk at the end. Okay, wonderful. So yeah. there are plenty of resources. Our study abroad office is here to help you. And if people are going to give away money, you might as well apply because the worst that can happen is you don't get it, but you will never know if you don't apply. And so Kelly will go into more detail regarding the scholarship opportunities. So this is not cheap, right? Um, and when we think about how you might be sitting there thinking like, oh, how am I going to pay for this once in a lifetime opportunity? And some tips and tricks that have been kind of reiterated to myself to share with you all is thinking about lifestyle changes. So where in your life right now could you cut down on expenses? I know that some of you probably really like going to Phil's Coffee, right? We love supporting a local biz, but what would that coffee a day not and making it at home actually save you in the long run? So thinking about maybe not eating out as much, not getting that Uber Eats, packing your food to take to school, different ways that we can cut down on expenses that way. And if you're not already hustling with the many side jobs that I know our student population does, thinking about what are some other ways that you could pick up some employment maybe this summer, um, as well as thinking about hosting a garage sale, right? Uh, yes, we love donating for a good cause, but if you could sell your old things, that's just extra cash in your pocket to help you pay for the program, but also thinking about saving up money in preparation for all the fun things that you want to do when you're in London. So budgeting is a big part of this because the last thing we want is that you get there and you're having so much fun and you just spend it all so quickly and you're like, oh no, what do I do now? Right? So we're, we'll definitely want to make sure that we're budgeting in a, in a friendly way to help you have the best experience. And then lastly, there's no shame in asking for help. So this is the time now where you can reach out to family members, friends, people that you that you know that would love to support you in this opportunity. Um, you could create a GoFundMe. You could ask people to give you money through Zelle, uh, Venmo campaigns, right? So there's different ways that you can ask. And I know for some of us, it might be a bit challenging to ask for help, especially if you find yourself to be an independent person. Um, but there's no shame in asking for help and how this is um, kind of helping this, this opportunity. And 
what I what I've heard some students do in the past is they will get donations from folks and then they will be updating with like a weekly kind of newsletter of what they're doing in their study abroad trip. So people that are investing in this kind of opportunity for you are getting a sneak peek into what's happening because not everybody likes to post to social media and it could be a more intimate thing to keep the people in your lives that help support your trip um, involved. So something to think about. And then lastly, is this experience right for you? So when we are studying abroad in, in a foreign country, right, it can be challenging and there can be uh, stressors that occur. And so it's important to speak directly and prior to applying with your study abroad director to discuss all of your DSPS accommodations you might require, disclose any physical mental health issues or physical limitations, dietary requirements, medications, et cetera, you may have because we want to make sure that we are supporting you in this adventure and that we have the resources to meet your needs. And then lastly, discuss expectations and challenges posed by the study abroad location and culture. So ADA accommodation, American Disability Act, does not impact all parts of the world. And so we are very privileged to have the, the civil rights that we have and the history behind our country here in America. Um, but sometimes that always doesn't equate. So if you are someone that needs accommodations, you have concerns about mobility, we want to make sure that given the program and where we're going to be in the location, that you can be successful as students in this adventure. And lastly, eligibility requirements. So in order to be eligible for the study abroad experience, you need to be 18 years or older by our departure date. And you have to have at least a 2.25 GPA and have completed 12 or more units of college level courses. And so this is where we talk about deadlines. And I don't know, Kelly, if you wanted to, to jump in about deadlines or Paula. Sure. Okay, wonderful. Yes, um, uh, the pro uh, the program application is now open. I have a, a copy and paste the link application link in the chat. I'll do it again. And the the pro, um, priority uh, deadline is April nineteen. So I would strongly suggest you submit the application right now because currently I we have more than twenty students uh, submit the application, and there are seven students have made deposit. So this program does have a capacity. Um, the ab absolutely deadline for the application is June 5th. So if you need time to think about it and talk to your academic counselor or your family about it, um, do it soon. And also you can make an appointment with me, um, with uh, Alice or even with um, Professor Ayu. And then, then to talk about your concerns, your questions, um, I will, um, after this um, info session, I will send you all an email with um, our contact information, with how to make an appointment with us, scholarship information, everything um, in the email. So you have everything you need. Um, you, you would know what to do. So, yes. Awesome. Thank you. So before we go into um, answering some questions um, from the group here on Zoom, I think now might be a, a good opportunity to talk about the different scholarships. Yes, absolutely. There are that need to go back to that slide. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, there you Perfect. go. Perfect. Yes. Um, I would strongly uh, suggest everyone apply for AIFS scholarship. It's provided by AIFS, a range from $500 to $1,000. Um, every little money helps when you travel ab abroad, you know. Um, the application link is on our website. I will be sending it to you after this info session. Another one is Gilman Scholarship. This is a big one. It awards up to $5,000. The application deadline is March 7. We have had two um, info sessions for Gilman Scholarship. I have a recording on YouTube. I will be sending out to you um, right now, actually, in the chat. And of course, I will be including that in the email to you as well. 
I, for this uh, Gilman scholarship, we do put out a lot of resources for you, uh, for every student. This one is, um, you must be a US citizen and you must be uh, currently receiving Pell Grant, have a 2023-2024 FAFSA on file. Oh no, 2024, 2025 buffs are on file for full 2024 program. So uh, I strongly uh, suggest you schedule an appointment or go to financial aid office if you don't know if you uh, qualify for Pell Grant to meet with the financial aid office. I will be including that information in the email. I'm sending it to you. Um, additional resource is uh, for Gilman scholarship, you'll be writing three essays. How do you do these essays? Uh, we, I will connect you with the Learning Center. Uh, Skylines College Learning Center will help you, guide you through the essay process. And after you're done with your essay, or if you haven't started with your essay, you have questions on how to start your essay, you can make an appointment with me or Alice uh, or with the Learning Center. We can uh, guide you through the process. Um, the fund for education abroad. Oh, I'm sorry. This one is um, just past the deadline. This one, the deadline was February seven, so okay. it's a little late for that. Um, there are other scholarship opportunity as well. Um, there's one um big one is um scholarships through SMCCT study abroad. Um, that deadline is March seven, uh, March second. Again, I will list that in the email as well. Um, yes, um, don't be shy to apply for all the scholarship. Again, the a scholarship essay you'll be writing for Gilman if you're applying for Gilman. You know, the essay you'll be, you can, um, the content you can reuse because it's still you. You wrote your about your life, your hardship, and the things you're going through, you're applying for this program as partially um, the essay you can reuse them to apply for other pro other uh, scholarship. So make sure um, review them before you submit for different scholarship, tweak them um, to make your scholarship essay um, suits for different scholarships. So uh, don't think of writing three essays for human scholarship is a lot of work. True, it is a lot of work, but once you wrote them, you can reuse them. And uh, for other scholarship, even if you future for other, like you don't do study abroad, you can do other program, neither uh, scholarship essay, you can reference that as well. So I strongly suggest you all to look into the Gilman um, website. It gave you guidance on how to um, sub how to write those essays. Um, I will be paste, copying and paste this human website here as well. Just in case you're curious right now, you can take a look really quick, but I will be sending you the information soon. So um, that's all for scholarship. Um, I will start from there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. And then Paula, was there anything that you would like to add that maybe I left out? Honestly, I thought it was perfect. So I think um, the only thing I might stress is that uh, there is a commute, right? That London is a big city. It's one of the biggest cities in the world. And that uh, sometimes 45 minute to an hour commute seems uh, like a crazy lot. But think about um, probably where you live to downtown San Francisco by public transportation. It would be pretty much probably the same thing. So that's that's more or less normal. It is normal, right? For um, study abroad students who live in London, so. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we can now open it up. <clears throat> if anybody has questions. Um... Uh, should we have um, Alexa talk about her experience? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm so sorry, Alexa. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alexa is here with me. My voice might be project. It will be showing up on Kelly's screen because my computer is doing something weird. So hi, I'm I'm in the same room as her let at me, the moment. Let me. Okay, I'll just that. turn off my camera and I'll have I'll speak okay. with you guys. She's pretty sure. Okay. Um, okay. Hi. Okay. Sorry. 
Um, so I know that Paula and Lindsay both said about the commute being like 45 minutes. It's really not that bad. It's like half hour to 45 minutes, but nothing above 45 minutes. You just got to time it right. The tube, I was there when the queen unfortunately did pass. So a lot of people were like trying to go out and see her funeral. So it was a little bit more of an excursion for me. But um, she, she, oh my God, not she, sorry. Um, the tubes, it, it, you just got to time it right. It, I got there once within like 30 minutes probably because I took the fastest route than the route that probably one of, if it's Matthew that might be doing the tour, um, he took the longest route to go to the schools. So if you take the shorter route, which you guys will learn eventually, um, it's not that bad. It's really, it's super easy. Um, I unfortunately did not get the chance to do the homestay. That's a really cool thing to do. The other schools, I know that someone in, I believe, Contra Costa Community College, I think they did Los Medanos, I do not remember. They stayed at the homestay up north from us, and it was, apparently they said it was really good. So I would definitely recommend it. I, um, back when I did, I didn't get the chance to do it because we didn't have that opportunity because it was still in COVID. But I'm glad that you guys get the opportunity. That's actually super cool. Um, for dorm room living, it's exactly what it is. It's like a dorm room. It is smaller than you'd think it was. It's not like the normal pictures or like TikToks that people see of like dorm room living where you have a bunk bed, like a bed here and a bed here. It's bed and then a bed on top. So it's like bunk bed and then you have your little kitchen and your own bathroom. It's, it's really neat. It's super cute. Um, but you all live on the same floor unless some people decide to do like their own room like single room living, then they're on like the floor below. Also, don't forget that the first floor, like ground level, that isn't the first floor. The first floor is on the top, is the floor above it. So it's ground level, then first floor, then second floor. I got them mixed up multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but dorm room living, super cute. It, I also recommend for like expenses and stuff to go out a bunch. That way you can experience like the, the pub culture, can go to the markets especially too. I went to Camden Market, um, Borough Market. I used to get my, I got my groceries there every week. It's about, it's over, it's across the London Bridge. So it's on the other side of the river. So it's a little bit more of a 30 minute commute, but it's totally worth it. I do recommend it. Um, but other than that, groceries is super cheap, very much more cheap, especially in, if I'm correct, you guys will be staying next to in Iceland. It's not the country, it's a store. Don't worry. Um, and they have really cheap groceries. There's also a grocery store on the other side of the street that's also super cheap. And then there's a little convenience store. If I'm, if I'm right, I'm going based off of what I, where I was staying. Um, it's super cheap and there's, you get all your toiletries, all your toilet paper, everything that you need there. Extremely cheap. I can't see myself. I can't. Okay. Um, uh, for school wise, um, I like education. It was really cool. Um, it might be a little, it might feel a little different, especially not going to like an actual school. You're going, you're going to be going to like the AFS quarter, uh, AFS building. But it feels like a classroom. It has it's super. It's much bigger than you think it is. Um, the classrooms fit at least like thirty five to forty students sometimes. For the British Life and Culture one, you guys will be in a huge like dorm dorm room. Sorry, huge classroom. It's kind of like the auditorium at CSM kind of. If you guys have ever been there, it's like as big as that pretty much. A little bit smaller. Obviously, it doesn't have like the huge globe on the top. <laughs> that would be cool. Um. But it's really good. I would recommend it for like studying and stuff to if you obviously need help, talk with AFS to study, talk with your your professors. Since it's a very small like classroom and there's not like hundreds of students talking with your professors all the time, having uh, hundreds of students talk with the professors so you have to like do certain meetings, they'll talk to you like they'll go up like get some food with you, they'll talk with you. It's great. They'll have you study, they'll help you on tests if you have any. Um 
for I used to go out to like little coffee shops. There's a cute coffee shop that is one pound coffee that I got every single day when I went to school. <laughs> um, it's right across from the AFS um, where you guys will be doing your classes and stuff. It's right across from there. It's super cute. I unfortunately do not know the name. Uh, but one pound coffees and one pound teas. I used to study there, so I used to bring my um, like computer. Oh, that's another thing. Do not leave your valuables unattended, or do, if you have it, do not look away from it. It might, because there are a lot of pickpocketers there. I'm, a bunch of people, the very first day, thought, oh, it's like America, it'll be fine. Put their phone in their back pocket. I would not recommend that. Put it in your front pocket, or put it in the bag, and hold, and like, zip your bag do not leave stuff unattended it will get taken just be careful mindful of that um and if it does they will like try and help you out and find it they're very good the police there are very good about like actually like being on top of things and like trying to help you to find your stuff um but don't leave anything unattended just if you do decide to like get up and go to the bathroom just take your stuff with you and obviously if your seat is taken go somewhere else like, don't try and, like, leave your stuff. It will get taken. But, honestly, the tube, the tube, sorry, I have one more thing to say, and then you guys can finish up. Um, The tube, it does get really busy. So, if you do have a knee problem or any, like, hip problems, you do have to make sure to tell AFS about that because the tube is, you will be standing nearly the entire time in the mornings if you have the 8 a.m. classes because, it is super busy and there's a lot of stairs by the way so if you guys do have like any injuries that you need to be taken care of like I hadn't I dislocated my knee with when I was there so I had to like travel um like take ubers or taxis and that's really cost effective but AFS did help me out with it um but um a lot of stairs you guys will get your steps in so don't worry about getting a gym membership or anything you guys can do that there is a gym that will be near the stay where you guys will be staying not home stays but the apartment stay so you guys can get a gym membership there um but you will get your work done for sure um i had a great time i really wish i was going again but i can't so <laughs> <laughs> thank you alexa i really appreciate that perspective um Awesome. I guess at this point, if there's any, we have about eight minutes left um, for this meeting. If there's any questions that you have, um, anything you're wondering, if we don't know the answer today, we can get back to you. Feel free to unmute uh, yourself. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering, um, I'm a veteran. Um, and y'all had any other veterans previously um if they had any um any kind of assistance that they had um going in um yeah i don't know anything about that <clears throat> you're, you're asking if there are uh veteran financial financial aid packages or things like that yeah like if you know of any of the veterans that attended um did have assistance either through any of their benefits or um, any other special programs or anything like that? I personally do not know that answer. Does anybody on the call know that answer? This will be my first time doing this, Miguel, so I'm learning as we go here, but that's a great question. Um, uh, either Paula or Alice, would you like to take the question? Thank you. Yeah, we have had uh, veterans attend programs before. As far as how much of your um, benefits can travel with you will depend on your uh, resource office. So my suggestion would be to meet um, with your re uh, veterans resource officer and um, discuss that. It it varies, right? Um, how how your school will interpret the the law and how much. Right. You can generally your housing does carry over the rest of it, it. It depends on the school, but it is a program run by your school. So theoretically it all should. So. Oh, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Isaac, you posed the question. 
if we go to different neighboring countries like France or Norway, um, not the program itself, but you do have the freedom and opportunity to book and plan trips on your own. Um, obviously taking into consideration your class schedule and different things like that, but you can, you can work it to where you have potentially like, you know, a, a three day weekend, depending on the courses that you sign up with. Um, but yeah, just to, there's really great budget airlines where you can get a one way ticket for as low as sometimes 69 bucks um, to go to a different country. So um, we will not be doing that as a group, but you have the privilege of doing that on your own if you would like to. Um, I also received a question, how many students will attend in total? And it's approximately 30 students from each college, so around 120-ish. Is that a correct number? Okay, Paula, you're, you're shaking your head yes. Um, and then I just got another question. How likely is it to be accepted into the program or how many students usually apply? Um, yeah, I do know that after the application process um, and you paying the deposit, the next step would be an interview with myself and the study abroad folks. And that's where we get to know you a little bit more. You can ask more personal questions and we can see, is this program going to be a fit for you? Um, as far as how many students apply and end up actually being accepted and going, I'm going to default to our study abroad folks on those numbers. Sure. Um, uh, uh, let me uh, reinstate the program eligibility. You must be 18 years old or older to be participating in this program. And then your GPA must be 2.25 or higher. Uh, you have to complete a minimum of 12 units of college credit classes to apply um, for this program. Um, so uh, in the past, for example, about the number for Florence in spring 2024, um, right now, they just left actually a few days ago. There in Florence, we had 27 students participate in the program. So Lindsay gave the number about 30. That's about, that's correct. Um, once you, again, um, once you submit your application, we have a uh, a few steps for you to do. Um, I will let you know right now the steps are. First step is for you to submit uh, application on AIFS uh, website portal. I will uh, link that right now, that's application. After we receive your application and the deposit, um, again, uh, on AIFS website portal, when you apply, you must pay the deposit. If you do not pay the deposit, we consider your application as incomplete. After you pay the deposit, it means your application is completed. Then I will uh, receive your application and then I, uh, Alexa and I will contact you to fill out another application. It's uh, SMCCCD application. It's for us um, to you need to input your student ID number, your passport uh, information, and things like that. It's, it's a simple application. So um, then we will schedule you for the interview with the professor. After we've done the, professor, uh, done the interview with the professor, and um, we will, um, if you were accepted, we'll be officially accepting you, sending you the official acceptance letter by email and you will have a few documents that you need to sign. Um, for example, the dates and deadline documents and like a release of liability documents. Um, and uh, most importantly, one more thing you need to do is select your courses because um, the courses, I actually want you to do it uh, as soon as possible. The reason being um, is, uh, you know, it's a consortium program. Um, then you are required to take four classes. The life and culture class is mandatory. The other three classes, you can choose one offered by our professor communication class. You may choose two more from other colleges. Some popular uh, classes might get picked quickly. So if you really you set an eye on some of the courses. For example, 
um, intercultural communication and gender communication argument and debate might be really popular. So you would want to submit your course uh, preference form ASAP to me so I can um, put your name down for those courses, even though right now you cannot register for those classes. But we have a separate spreadsheet shared with the other four college district um, on who, who's planning to take which classes. Those are set in, set in there. Um, I want to add one more thing is even though right now you maybe you select four classes, you do have the option to change your mind later. So don't worry about that part. Um, you said set, uh, send into the request too early. Yeah, you can change it as long as there's space. You can change it, but I do want you to get the classes you really want. Thank you. And the the last link that Kelly put in the chat, it actually has a course description and kind of a message from each professor around how they're going to be teaching the course in London. And so that can also help. Um, it's a little bit more detailed than your average course catalog or web schedule that you look at. And also give you kind of an idea of, of their approach to the discipline, which I think is is really helpful. I wish we could do it um, as a district, but I don't know. That seems like it might take up too much space on the internet, but um, really great way to show you kind of what the approach is for each discipline as well. Yes, I love the class descriptions. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself to ask questions. Where do we find those class descriptions? Sorry. Um, in the chat, it says courses, and then there's a link. And if you click on that, it will take you to an online page with those. And then, yeah, they've just been put back in the chat too. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. I know it's a lot of information, a lot of resources, a lot of links. So no worries. Yes. If you miss anything, don't worry about it. I will be sending you an email after this info session later this afternoon with a recording and with all the links we I've been putting in the chat. And then about how competitive it is. Um, right now, there's currently 45 people on an interest list. Is that correct, Kelly? Um, um, yes, that's that's correct. And six folks have already put uh, in the application. And, oh, seven have put in yes. their application and paid the deposit. And so um, as far as competitiveness goes, the sooner you get in your application, the better your chances are of making sure that you can participate in the program. Um, as long as you're meeting all those eligibility requirements and steps. So, yeah. Uh, a question. Yes, Miguel. Um, so with those other classes um, taught by other professors that are not in the San Mateo district, are those going to be available to register in, in our registration process? Yes, absolutely. So that's where it gets to be a bit tricky because we're different college systems, but all of the course registration will be handled by our study abroad office in AIFS, and it will be reflected on your official transcripts after um, the semester's over. So you'll have that credit registered. Yeah. Well, when we're selecting these classes, we'll have, uh, do we go through the same process of registering for those classes? You will give your course preference list to Kelly. And then oh, okay. we'll register you in those officially with our program. Oh, it's a bit gotcha. different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can add a little bit about the course registration process. So uh, Lindsay was correct. So you first gave me the uh, course pre preference sheet. Um, and then I will enter you in a shared spreadsheet with a full college district. So at, when the course opens up, then you will receive one email from me because these courses are not open to the public. It has a cohort restriction. So I will work with the admissions office to have your account open um, to register for these classes. You will be, after that, you will be logged into your web smart account, then just how you normally register your class, enter the CRN and then register the classes. 
but anybody else who's not in this cohort will not be able to register for this classes. Um, we have one more question. If my GPA is ineligible at the moment, is there any way I can still apply and have time to get it up? Um, yes. So we do have one um, policy provisional, provisional uh, enrollment. You can apply right now and you can use your um, spring 2024 um, and summer 2024 GPA combined. Um, by that time, um, when the when the uh, grades release, if your GPA meets uh, uh, 2.25, you will be still eligible. However, there's a risk on your side because you are required to pay the deposit if the we do have a refund deadline, if the past the refund deadline, you will not um you will not be able to get a refund. Um, being so, you if you are uh, super confident that you will reach the two point two five GPA, I would encourage you to do it. Otherwise, um, there's a risk. Thank you. Okay, folks, that is our time for today's first info session. We hope that you feel a little bit more confident about what this program is and the expectations for you as students with the application process. Um, like Kelly mentioned, if um, you are on that, that list that got you here today, she's going to be sending out all of the resources that we shared. Because sometimes when you click on a link in Zoom, you might close the window after you shut off your computer for the day. So all of that information will be sent to you. And in the meantime, if you have any questions about the, my classes and you want to talk a little bit more um, about what I know, here's my email address. You can email me and I... I I tend to take at least 48 hours to respond, um, but the goal is to definitely get back to you. So with that being said, um, thank you very much, everyone. We appreciate you being here, and we hope to maybe see you at uh, the official orientation for the trip. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.